Oh, 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 no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Please, before you go, can you go and, and, and click like, thumb, thumb, thumbs up? Yeah, I was told that if you don't do that, nobody will see this video. It's a new thing. Please, can you do that for me? Click, before, we, before anything, just click on, yeah, thumbs up for the video. So that people will, YouTube, they do these things, I don't understand. If you don't do that, nobody, they won't show this to people. Please, can you help me out? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Ha! Thank you, my man. Introducing Dr. Jackie Damage. Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damage. We're coming to you from the greatest city in the world. New York City. Yes, yes, yes. New York City is so great that a man from Pennsylvania up there <laughs> has been arrested for trying to avoid paying a $16 toll to cross the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> it, is, it is not that he, the man was trying to avoid paying tolls. That is the issue. No, 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 no. A lot of people try that every day. <laughs> it is that the man designed a James Bond style license plate that closes when he approaches the camera at the toll gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, this is the headline. <laughs> now, 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 watch the James Bond kind of thing that uh, we're talking about from, from the movie. Watch. Kind of reminds you of that scene from the James Bond Goldfinger movie. Revolving number plates, naturally. <laughs> now, talking of James Bonds of Nigerian politics, a cross section of James Bond wannabe met in Lagos the other day. Take a look at them. Ay, yeah, yeah. Yes! Did you see how they, they were showing their fake smiles, shaking hands, you know? All these Southwest politicians running to be president under APC agreed to support whoever wins the primary. Take a look at them again. The purpose is that is to ensure that the presidency of Nigeria in 2023 will come to Southwest. Did you see the knives they have in their pockets, even though they were smiling and shaking hands and uh, talking. They have knives ready. <laughs> now, now, they came to a very important conclusion. This is the conclusion of everything. That if you bought a form for 100 million Naira, nomination form, you will get a profit within the range of 200 to 600%. If, if before the primaries, you endorse one of their own. Hey! I heard that rich people are now falling over themselves to invest. Do you want to be president? They can give you 100 million loan. Considering the returns in just one month, you get 600%. No investment is like that. You know? Anyway, <laughs> I may think about it. I may. Don't just, just think. In the next few days, you may hear my name running for president. Of course, if I have investors, this money making venture. Anyway, on our show today, Evil men who killed Nigeria to date are set to take the body to the grave. Oh yes, here is one of them. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. The man who killed Nigeria to death by being a rubber stamp for every loan request that Buhari sent to the Senate. He wants to be president. Also, also, the worst attorney general in the history of Nigeria. In the history of Nigeria, Abu Kamalami is running to become the governor of Kebi State. Yeah. Now, as a man who hates corruption so much, he is campaigning in style. Look at the headline. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, the Attorney General Malami is giving out 200 Mercedes cars, BMW, SUVs, Toyota SUVs, everything, to Kebi delegates to clear his way to becoming the governor of the state. Now, he is not becoming governor to, to lift KB people up. No, nothing like that. Nonsense. He is doing so to secure immunity from uh, prosecution for all the bad, bad things he did as attorney general. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, so put on your seatbelt uh, because, because this next four weeks will be the most important four weeks in the history of Nigeria. 
Make or break. Yes. People like me may run for president. You know, listen to them. Um, a woman who was alleged to have killed her husband to death. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, how much is 100 million naira? How much? Do you know? Once in a while, a politician or government official will tell you what they really think about you. Yes, you. <laughs> I hate it when people say that these politicians are arrogant. No. They just tell you who you are. You either believe it or you don't. That's up to you. Now, when Nigerians complained that things were hard, during the time of President Shehu Shagari, most of you were not born then, <laughs> a powerful minister called Umaru Diko said this, and I quote, Nigerians are not poor since they haven't started eating from the dustbin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Now we're eating from the dustbin, of course. Look at Now, now, after a few days of making that beautiful statement, the government of Shagari was overthrown by a certain uh, major general. What's his name again? Um, <laughs> Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> now, according to the general, millions of naira were stolen from the national coffers. Hey, yeah. And as a result, <laughs> he said that the people groaned under the twin yoke of pervasive corruption, skyrocketing prices, and general insecurity of lives and property. Hey, Oibo. You see, you see, Oibo that others wrote for you come out better, you know, than the one you, you wrote yourself. Does Buhari know how to write? Anyway, what am I saying? Anyway, back to what he's saying. In 1980s, pervasive corruption, skyrocketing prices, and general insecurity. That's what he said. 1980, skyrocketing prices. Doesn't that sound familiar today? Doesn't that sound familiar to you today? Yes, indeed. It seems Nigerians are living in the times described by General Buhari. Okay, okay, multiply it by 100 times. <laughs> now, now, the difference is that we are no longer about talking about millions of naira, but billions and trillions. And the same general is now in power as an elected civilian president. Now, these days, when politicians and government officials talk about millions, they are just discussing tokens. No, 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 no just, just, just listen to APC chairman. When I contested for the chairmanship, I mean for the Senate, all I paid was just a token, about 5,000. I mean, 5 million, 10 million, including expression. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Damu said he paid a token of 10 million naira to purchase the nomination form for APC to contest for Senate. Of course, of course, it will be a token to a man accused of stealing 15 billion naira when he was governor of one of the poorest states in the country. No wonder <laughs> Mr. Damu told Voice of America House of Service that any country that practices democracy, like Nigeria, we fix the amount for presidential nomination lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nigeria is indeed a, a peculiar nation in a peculiar mess. <laughs> Sasha, tweet that out. <laughs> Seven ministers whose salaries throughout their stay in office are not up to the cost of the nomination forms of APC are purchasing it with so much ease that you begin to wonder do they have access to the central bank? <laughs> Maybe! <laughs> Let us try to estimate how much 100 million naira is in Nigeria. Real figures. According to the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, 99.4% hey, of 128 million bank accounts in Nigeria have less than 500,000 naira in each. As of 2021, that's when there was money. Now there's no money. How much do you have in your account? You're looking at me like you have more than that. Note that 100 million is 20 times. 20 times that 500,000 that people have in the account. Now, it means that over 120 million bank accounts holders in Nigeria do not have one out of 20 of the cost of APC presidential nomination form in their bank accounts. I know. <laughs> Some have it under their soccer way. Oops, what am I saying? It is the same people who have the 100 million 
that hide money in the soccer way. What am I saying? So, so, so the 72 million Nigerians who do not have bank accounts to begin with probably have less than 50K at home. Now, if you want to go mad, <laughs> compare the cost of the nomination form with the minimum wage. You know, 100 million naira to 30,000 naira. You will see that if you make minimum wage in Nigeria, you will have to work all your life, die, come back, work all your life, die, come back, and do it for 50 times <laughs> before you make 100 million. As a matter of fact, with a generous life expectancy of 70 years, I just give you that you 20 extra. Your life expectancy is 50 in Nigeria. Now, take, take, take it that you have to make minimum wage 48 lifetimes if you work and save everything you, every cobble you made before you can make 100 million. Yes. And yet, the APC chairman, who himself had a 15 billion naira EFCC fraud case on his head before he became born again APC member, is saying to Nigerians that how much is 100 million? How much? But, but, but think of it too. By the time it is over, 30 APC aspirants for president must have paid 100 million to collect presidential nomination form. 30 of them. We're counting. <laughs> that is 3 billion right there. If you add those running to be governors and those running to be members of the National Assembly, you know, you are talking about 20 to 30 billion naira. Now, <laughs> in the last six years, ASO and university teachers, they've been on strike. They spent four, one out of every four days in the last six years on strike. That is more than 390 days on strike in the last six years. Why? I know you don't know why. Forget about why. Why they're on strike? You know what happens? 1.8 million students, Nigerian students in Nigerian public universities are at home. Those are your future lawyers, doctors, engineers at home doing nothing. Now, how much is ASU looking for that has kept millions of our students, millions of them at home? How much? 880 billion. Look at the headline. I know that you don't know the figure. <laughs> That's it. I'm sure that there are 800 people in that country that can bring out 100 million each. 100 million. And, and that's it. As soon as we come back to work. You know, they, they have it hidden under their beds, in the soccer way, or buried inside a remote farm somewhere in a kitty forest. <laughs> yes. So it makes you wonder, Africa, who did this to us? Who did this to us? Welcome to Olivia Court, located in the heart of Lekki, giving you more in every aspect, from comfort, convenience to centrality. With proximity to notable places such as IMAX Cinemas, Palms Shopping Mall, Admiralty Way Lekki, Banana Island, Olivia Court offers affordable luxury redefined to suit our customers. Apartments available consist of studio apartments, one bedroom and two bedroom apartments designed with premium quality and state of the art interior. Olivia Court offers clean and serene environment, ease of access and so much more. Come experience luxury living on a larger scale at Olivia Courts designed for the everyday you. Terra Developers, living the good life. Following the sad death of celebrated gospel singer Osinachi Mwachuku, we take a closer look at the church, society, and the role they play in keeping victims of domestic violence silent. First of all, an introduction. Daddy Gio, please, please, tell them. It is better to be alive without a marriage than to die because of marriage. Yes! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we had you loud and clear. We had you, you know. But, but can you also explain this to us, sir? This one. If you don't love anybody's daughter, instead of killing them, hand them back to their father. Divorce is not allowed under any condition. 
Did you, did you really say that divorce is not allowed under any condition? Not even in the event of abuse, the type that Sister Osinachi went through. Is that? Did you tell her this? Who knows, who knows? Maybe she listened to this sermon. Could that be why she did not tell you what she was going through? Again, sir, 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 uh, wait, wait, sir, uh, no, no. You, you did not say, no, did, did you say that, that the church is always the first point of contact? You said that. This kind of time is a time where people heap all manner of blames on the church. And that is typical because whatever goes wrong, any time it is the first point of call is the church. Now, what then happened with Sister Osnachi? Does this mean the church is disconnected from her members? Or, or perhaps the church silenced her with its position on divorce? Again, again, it would seem that the church's position on divorce. Here, Pastor Winfield. Watch. Divorce is not an option. Yes. Pastor Winfield. But, but why is that, though? Why? Why is that? I will, even if you don't. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm promising to be faithful, to, to stick with you, to, to be in it for the long haul, no matter what, in sickness and in health, in good times and bad. Pastor Paul believes that marriage is a covenant that must not be broken. He believes that couples must not divorce under any circumstance, as that will offend God. No? Yes, that's what he says. What then is the hope of a woman trying to get out of an abusive marriage in Nigeria? What hope? Now, since the church has its feet firmly stamped on its sermon on divorce is not allowed, can the laws of the state come true? The answer lies in the Matrimonial Clause Act of 1990, which outlines the grounds for divorce. Oh yes, it's interesting to note that domestic violence does not make it on the list. Take a look. Yes, it's not there. It's not on the list of what you could say is the reason why you are divorcing your wife or your husband. It's not. It's not on the list. What is there? You see, you see, as you can see, Unless your husband is denying you sex or you are ghosting you, the Nigerian courts do not think your marriage has broken down irretrievably. No, no, no. After all, after all, it was not always like this, they said. We only hear about problems in marriage <laughs> these days because people are not more spiritual. Yes, can all people everywhere. Hear our beloved man of God. This is why in those days, you hear less about marriage crisis in the church. Because of spirituality. Yes, these are the people. These are the people. But, but it is sad. It is sad because even with all the silence and the spirituality, Osinachi is no longer here to bless us with her beautiful voice. The mother. May her soul rest in peace. And may you think, you, you, preacher, think about what you're saying, people you're influencing, and the impact it's having, the people dying because of you. Yes, you, I said it. Are you seeking immigration legal assistance in the United States? Contact U.S. Immigration Advocate. We are a full-service firm dedicated to assisting clients with their immigration needs. We work with clients in exploring options including permanent residency, naturalization, and other forms of immigration relief to remain in the United States. Should you have any questions about your immigration needs, contact us at 844-419-4900 or email us at inquiry at usimmigrationadvocate.com. Welcome to Damage Control, where we illustrate the real cost of corruption so that we all can understand it better and buy into the need to go beyond being outraged to become part of the agents for change. Damage Control is brought to you by MacArthur Foundation and CITAD. I am 
Dr. Damages. Corruption is not just about giving or taking money. Corruption is about not doing the right thing. And why are we corrupt? Because of lack of understanding. Because we do not understand that we don't need too much. Oh, it's amazing how the status of petroleum subsidy had evolved since 2015 when President Muhammadu Buhari came to power. Amazing, the changes. It moved from being a fraud, according to Buhari, to something that has become so vital that a whooping four trillion, not billion, trillion, has been budgeted for oil subsidy in this year's budget, 2022 budget alone, four trillion. Listen to Buhari in 2011. Who is subsidizing the, the Nigerian oil industry, petroleum industry, was developed with Nigerian capital. In fact, most of the expertise are Nigerians. If anybody said he is subsidizing anything, he is a fraud. Yes. He said that <laughs> what is called subsidy was nothing but fraud. What these people talking about subsidy? Who is subsidizing it? But, but there is so much fraud, as I said, in the country that I don't talk about it. But the day I have to talk about it, I will ask the petroleum economists to come and tell me who is subsidizing Nigerians. And that he will ask economists to tell him who was subsidizing who when he became president. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, 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 we, we, as we all know now, Buhari has been president for seven years now, you know. Seven years. He even doubles as both the president and the petroleum minister. Amazing. Yet, the subsidy fraud persists. And even on a more grand scale. For three million. Under Buhari, the petroleum subsidy that was once called a fraud has grown from 307 billion in 2015 to a mind-boggling 4 trillion in 2022. That is a whopping 100, what am I saying? 1,202% increase within seven years. Hey, imagine what will happen when Tinubu comes. Now, now this, this unbelievable increase in subsidy payment is occurring side by side with a continuous increase in government spending on reviving petroleum refineries in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? Double wahala. Yes, take a look at the headline. Wonderful. Now, between 2015 and 2020, the government spent almost 1.5 trillion on the maintenance of our four refineries that did not produce, the one in Canada did not produce a single petroleum drop of petrol, drop, or any refined product, nothing. Yet, in March of 2021, President Mohamed Buhari still approved a further sum of 1.5 billion dollars that is 600 billion naira for the rehabilitation of the port Harcourt refinery yes can you imagine that the implication implication is that by the end of 2022 the buhari regime will have spent 10 trillion listen to me 10 trillion 25 billion dollars on petroleum subsidy and maintenance of our <laughs> dead refineries 25 billion dollars this amount is more than the cost of Dangote Refinery, which stands at $19 billion. So President Buhari keeps <laughs> telling us that, <laughs> that Nigeria, that it, it finally we will get out of this importation of petrol when Dangote finishes his, his refinery. Think of this. We have spent $25 billion on subsidies and on maintenance of all refineries in the last seven years. When we could have built one for 19 billion. Yes. And to thank Dangote for doing the job that the government was supposed to do, Buhari signed to give Dangote refinery, no, Dangote, $2.76 billion of your money. Hi. The idea is that Nigerian government will get 20% share of Dangote's refinery for what? $2.76 billion. Meanwhile, with $2.76 billion, you know, Nigeria can easily build a refinery that can handle 300,000 barrels a day. Hey! Well, unlike 2021, when the House of Rep probed uh, the, 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 the money payments, for subsidy payments, 
under President Goodluck Jonathan, we may never know what happened to over 10 trillion that Buhari spent so far. Because, because the House of Rep only exists to approve funds for the executive. Rubber stamp, I made Rawan. Rubber stamp, I made Lawan. That's it. We may never know what happened. 10 trillion. Where did the money go? Nobody knows. They, 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 they don't even care. It is your money. Hey, hey, they've collected their own. They don't care anymore. That is the unfortunate situation. Nigeria has found itself under President Muhammad Buhari. And I ask you again, Africa, who did this to us? Who did this to us? Now, this is something that we call Secret Serve. Now, it's based on the premise that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. Yeah, Secrets of Pictures is brought to you by Travel Documents. The most common complaint that I get in emails is the challenges Nigerians face when they want to renew their passports or obtain travel documents from our embassies and consulates worldwide. The frustration is legendary. Well, if you live in the US or Canada, help is just a phone call away. The people of Travel Document Express are here to help. They will process passport renewal and new applications for you. They will also help you with visa applications, business and tourist visas, and expatriates work permits. Do you need travel certificates? They will help you get that. To capital, they can also help you get your airline tickets to all African destinations. Here is the number to call for assistance. 713 429-7305. Let me know. Tell them Dr. Damage sent you. The picture you're looking at, oh, ho, 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 it's unbelievable. It's a poster from Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria University Spouses. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. They're inviting you to the opening ceremony of a two-day conference on sustainability, leadership, and community development. <laughs> Unbelievable. It starts on no Monday. They didn't pay me, but I'm giving you the information. On Monday, May 9th, 2022, <laughs> wives of vice chancellors, when did we get to this level? Eh? ASU is on strike. Public universities have been closed since February 14th. But the wives of vice chancellors are holding a conference on sustainable leadership. <laughs> you cannot make this up. <laughs> Their husbands are in charge of dying universities. Instead of them to join students to protest, they are having a conference. Now, as if that was not enough, they also issued a statement, another statement, publishing the Punch newspaper that they will travel to Istanbul in Turkey for a five-day conference. <laughs> I know. That one, that one will take place from July 18th to 23rd, just in case you want to go. They will, they will each pay 1.5 million naira to attend. Now, the conference is called the Leadership and Management Masterclass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they said that the goal is to prepare them to support their spouses. <laughs> yeah. You know, to support the vice chancellor, to figure out what the hell are we doing? Why are we still in, on the job? Why are we not fired? Africa, who did this to us? Think about it. This is the time to think. I'm worried. <laughs> who did this to us? Here are some stories making headline news across Nigerian newspapers this week. As always, headline news is brought to you by Help Me Waka. Help Me Waka, the people who run errands for you in Ghana and in Nigeria. Help Me Waka, go, go, go to their website. They, they bring up new things every time. Go and check them out. It's little not so long. I'm gonna make them last so hold This little nuts of mine oh, oh. I'm gonna make them last Oh, this little nuts of mine I'm gonna make... Someone, someone is FaceTiming me, someone... Hey! My grandson, Udoka, Udoka, how are you? Hello, Grandpa. Kedu? I don't know, man. What are you eating? Oh, <laughs> I have nothing left at home. I'm eating a uh, haku, <laughs> kepam kanel. That's all I have at home. Now I eat meal without meat. Haku without upa. <laughs> Mbano, that's not healthy. 
<laughs> what can I do? Eh? Can you please help me beg your father? Beg your father this Christmas to help me. Things are hard. Things are hard. Prices of things up, up, no energy. Up, up, up. In dark, Grandpa, I'll tell my dad right away. <laughs> Biko, thank you. Thank you, please. Thank you. Biko, Biko. This little nuts of mine. Dad. Hey, Udoka. <laughs> can you cage it? Grandpa is suffering in Nigeria. He needs your help urgently. Ah. Udoka, Udoka, how did you know he's suffering? We were just on a FaceTime call. He looks so skinny now. His stomach has shrunk and it's flattened. His stomach? Yes. Let, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. I, you, know, you know what? I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Look, that man, I give him money, he will go and use it to buy tobacco. And, and that's it. I give him money, he will go and give it out to his friends. And I give him money, he will go and marry a second wife and talk. No, I don't care whatever is happening to him. I don't, I don't care. I have a solution. What? What? Go to Help Me Waka and they'll send him any food item that you want to give Grandpa anywhere in Nigeria. Help me? Help me Waka. Hel really? Really, really. Help me Waka, the people that run errands for you. Help your people. Go to Help Me Waka and order items for them. They will be happy. Please, help them. Ah, the first story is amazing. 2023 presidency. We don't talk about anything in Nigeria. Nothing else. Except winner as a last choice, says the Sultan of Sokoto. <laughs> Amazing. You know, you know, I, 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 I don't want to take issues with the Sultan of Sokoto. I respect him so much, you know. But, but what, what should we do if the winner fails? The same way that Buhari failed. That's the question I have. Should we blame Allah who chose him for us? And, and how many times should Allah choose useless leaders for us before we abandon him and try Shango? I'm just, just thinking. I'm just thinking loud. My head is spinning. This is uh, confused. <laughs> Next. Ah, Nigerian government to spend 6 billion naira on training Kanu youths to repair smartphones and gain other skills. 6 billion naira. Now, that's my question. I understand, you know. Is that the best use of 6 billion naira? You know what I mean? With this money, you can have 600 Kanu youths pick up APC's presidential election forms. You know, there is, there is no way that one of them will not win. You know, I am sure that being president in Abuja and sharing our oil money to your people is a lot better than, than learning how to repair nonsense phones in Kano. Nonsense. <laughs> 600, six, 6 billion naira to learn how to repair phones. You can buy a company in China to make phones right there in, in Kano. Nonsense. Next. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, this is unbelievable. Nigerians should be thankful that they are not crossing the border to look for food under Buhari. Says uh, Femi additional. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should be thankful. You should be thankful that you're not begging. Nice man. You know, he says it as it is. I said a similar thing the other day. You know, people like Femi additional should be happy that Shangu has retired and is now in Elisha drinking Ogogoro. If it were when Shangu was still in active service. Na so thunder, thunder go fire the man. <laughs> but Shango has retired, so keep saying what you like. Nothing, nothing will happen. Next, oh, ho, ho. this is people saw this and they didn't understand it. Nigeria deploys two hundred and five troops to Gambia on peacekeeping mission. Some people think Nigeria should not do this when bandits are running over the country, taking over the country. You know. You see, the, the problem is that, I tell you, people, people who think like that, they are, they're just not smart. They're not very smart. It is like saying that President Buhari should stop uh, uh, going for medical treatment abroad because, because the, the hospitals in Nigeria are in terrible conditions. No. Does that make sense to you? I'm asking you, does it make sense? <laughs> See what I did? He thought I was going this way, and I went, ooh! <laughs> oh, okay, okay, one more, one more. Uh, oh, two, two, it's said two, okay. God told me that coronavirus won't go away, says Pastor 
Adeboye. Hey, yeah. Let me, let me ask you, uh, man of God. And what did you say to God, sir? Yes, what did you tell God? Did you tell him that he was just saying what scientists said in, in 2020? <laughs> you know that your people are finished. When prophets confuse analysis on the pages of newspapers as a message from God. That is a sign of a society that has passed away. Hey! <laughs> Sasha, tweet that out. Yes! Once your prophets are telling you what's on the pages of newspapers as something that God told them, your society has passed away. Put me. Ha, ha, ha. One last one, one last one. Elect me to end up Nepal chorus and give Nigerians broadband internet, says uh, 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 Vice President Shoshi <laughs> Bajo. He said it, you know. I'm like, this is what I feel. Hey, yeah. Shall, shall we tell him? Do you, do you think we should tell him? Shall we tell him that he has been elected twice to do exactly the same thing that he now wants to do? Now, now, before he cries that he has no power as vice president, shall we tell him that the money, that money that he's been sharing as a trader money, and um, what's the other one that he called the other one? End power and whatever, all those money, that it, the money is enough to fix Nepa and end up Nepa. Shall we tell him? Nah. Nah. Not after he paid $100 million. Nah. Anyway, that's all the time we have. Please keep following us on Twitter at Dr. Damages. And on Instagram at Dr. Damages. And on Facebook at Dr. Damages. And you can support us on patreon.com slash Dr. Damages. Any amount you can give. $1, $2, $3, even if you work for free. Anything you can give to help us bring you this show. To help us keep bringing this show to you. Thank you so much for those who are already supporting us. We appreciate you. Now, here is my concern for today. It's taken from page 419 of the book. Oh, Robin, oh, Robin, by Robin Williams. And he says, you're only giving a little spark of madness. You must not lose it. Hey, I go far to bring it to you. You are only giving a little spark of madness. You must not lose it. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You heal yourself. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. We are getting up there and I'm happy. We are, we're doing well. People are showing interest in what we're doing now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.